everyone. Welcome to the American Saddlebred Museum Lunchtime Lecture. This lecture series is a partnership with our friends, the International Museum of the Horse. And each month, on the first Thursday of the month, we bring you some great equine-related speakers. And we're glad that um, everyone's here in person and on Facebook Live. So thank you for being here. Our speaker today is Sarah Coleman. And she is the executive director of the Kentucky Horse Council, which is an um, amazing organization here in Kentucky. And I'm sure other states have horse councils as well. But it does a lot of uh, training, education, as well as um, does some legislation. Uh, so we're really excited that Sarah's here. And um, to learn more about the Kentucky Horse Council, we're going to turn the time over to Sarah. Thanks. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Um, like was mentioned, my name is Sarah Coleman. I'm the Executive Director of the Kentucky Horse Council. We actually have a small office here at the Kentucky Horse Park. We're lucky to share it at the Saddlebred Museum. Um, and it is, we have a very small staff, meaning it is me and two part-time ladies who are wonderful. They do everything from my membership perks to our social media and marketing outreach. Uh, just to give you guys a brief introduction to the Horse Council, we have actually, we have been a nonprofit in the state of Kentucky since 1992. However, we were actually formed as an advisory board slash, slash task force back in the mid-70s. And basically that was about the time that, um, you know, people in, in power, they were able to recognize that the equine community here in Lexington and in the entire state is very, very unique and they were seeking for ways that they could make sure that they preserved the equine community across the state uh, into perpetuity. So they started out, it became the Kentucky Horse Council then. We were incorporated in 1992. We have had multiple executive directors since then. Uh, I am the most recent one. I took Katie Ross's place here at the council and we are governed by a board of directors. We have about 23 right now all throughout the Commonwealth. So I tell everybody I have 23 very wonderful bosses. Um, the main thing that sets the Horse Council apart from a lot of the other equine organizations you all might be familiar with is that we are non-breed, non-discipline specific, meaning we are for every equine enthusiast in the state of Kentucky that there is. Um, our focus, I always say in a nutshell, is to lead, educate, and protect the equine community here in Kentucky. Um, I'm going to cover a couple different facets and ways that we do that, but uh, I know top of mind for most people right now is the floods that happened in eastern Kentucky a couple days ago. The Horse Council has been very involved. Unfortunately, we've had quite a few natural disasters in the state um, within the last year and a half. So we have been heavily involved with boots on the ground who are out in the affected counties. Uh, we work very closely with the Appalachian Horse Project, which is a 501c3 based out of Breathitt County. And that is our main contact down for the floods right now. So we have been uh, contacting through them different horse owners in the area and, and livestock owners honestly and saying you know what do you need how can we help you uh, the horse community in Kentucky and absolutely Ohio are the best around you guys will never find anybody who is more willing to jump in and help whether it's donations financial donations or boots on the ground than the horse industry I'm absolutely convinced but at this time we are asking people to refrain from you know finding out if they can donate buckets and feed and halters and lead ropes. We absolutely feel those things will be necessary in the future, but right now their main priority is still on locating people. Um, this was, I can tell you we were just down there yesterday and I cannot even begin to explain to you the level of devastation that that area has seen. So right now our focus is on supporting the horses that we know are in need. Right now we're doing that with hay donations. Um, and transporting small square bales specifically because when you think about how much they lost, you know, they lost all their barns so they don't have anywhere to store a lot of hay. They lost all of their tractors so they don't have the ability to move round bales. Uh, what we did yesterday is we went down with a hay donation. We set up actually in a gas station parking lot and calls were made and said, hey, if you have horses that need hay, come and pick it up. And whoever was not able to get in, a lot of people, thousands of people are still not able to get across creeks and into towns. We were able to unhook the trailer and then put the small square in the back of trucks and deliver it. So um, 
we are taking hay donations. If you guys are interested, the Horse Council website is KentuckyHorse.org, and our email is info at KentuckyHorse.org. If you guys are have hay that you're interested in donating, we are absolutely more than, than happy to arrange a transport down there. Additionally, if you guys are watching from the affected counties, if you are a horse owner or no horse owner, and you need something specific, email us. We will do our best to make sure that we, we get you guys help. Um, the Horse Council as a community is very, is very tied in with a lot of the other equine entities here in the state. You know, we work very closely with the University of Kentucky, which has been very helpful. Their extension agencies down in Eastern Kentucky, um, you know, we, we call them and text them on a very regular basis, unfortunately, now with the floods and say, you know, what do you need? How can we help? Where are the horses? Um, our KVMA, the Kentucky Veterinary Medical Association, it's, it's very unique. I've never been in a state that the, that the equine organizations rally the way they do here. Um, you know, we're already in talks with seeing, can we get vaccines donated? You know, with all the flooding waters down there, it's going to be a concern. Mosquitoes are going to be a concern. West Nile virus, East West and the vets are chomping at the bit to go down there and help. It's really a, a very unique community where we don't even have to ask. I mean, they come out of the woodworks to say, what do you need, how can we help? Uh, it's, it is an honor, truly, to, uh, to be involved in this industry. So to give you guys, <coughs> excuse me, uh, we don't only just do that, <laughs> thankfully. Unfortunately, we have, we've had the ability to, uh, to assist with the tornadoes in Western Kentucky in December of 2021 and also the floods in March of 2021. Um, so now here we are again. Thought last March we were, you know, going to be done with the flooding, and we're, we're right back at it. But we we do offer some other very important training and education um, opportunities for the equine industry as a whole. Uh, we do quarterly dinner seminars. They're called our Kentucky Equine Networking Association dinners, our Kena dinners. We actually have one coming up August 23rd. It's a Tuesday, and we focus very heavily on those on very broad based education. So this one that's coming up on the 23rd, we're actually gonna host it at Lucas Trace AgriScience Center. And it will be dinner. And there's actually 45 minutes beforehand for people to kind of mingle and introduce themselves to other people with whom they might not be familiar. Uh, we will eat a lovely dinner. We always have really, really good catering. And then we'll actually go into the indoor arena at Lucas Trace and we will have multiple different uh, equine body workers, chiropractors, acupuncturists, and uh, Pemf machine people to talk about what those modalities do. You know, a lot of times I feel we're, we're very um, open to these modalities more than we were a decade ago, but there's a lot of things that people don't understand about them. So these professionals will come in, they'll give a demonstration on some of the locust trace horses, and they'll say, you know, this is acupuncture and this is what it's helpful for, and this is chiropractic and this is what it's helpful for. So those Kena dinners are very well attended. Um, we, of course, took a hiatus during COVID, unfortunately, but we are back in force and we usually do a survey of our membership once or twice a year and say hey guys what do you want to learn you know what what are you interested in the last one we did actually covered equine insurance and not just like oh my horse got hurt is it insured it was everything from i board my horse and my friend wants to come and ride it you know i know that that person needs to sign a waiver with the barn owner but do they need to sign anything for me as i own the horse we all learned that none of us have enough insurance it was pretty much the gist of that, of that dinner um, but we do try to do a, a variety of informational topics four times a year. We also offer, we actually just completed it and we're getting ready, we're getting prepared to do another one in October. The Horse Council provides free uh, a livestock investigative training and that is geared towards animal control officers, judge executives, um, anybody who is involved with uh, potential neglect or confiscation cases. Uh, of large animals in particular, we, we welcome them to come. Um, we, we really want to disseminate information and make sure that everybody's on the same page. It's also very important, you know, with 120 counties in Kentucky, it's easy for, for them to feel lost, you know, to feel like they're, they're this one little island and they don't have any friends and they don't know who to talk to. So this livestock investigative training is really a way for all the people who are advocating for large animals in the state to kind of get together learn what other counties are doing, learn what other animal control officers are doing, what programs do they use, how do they keep track of potential neglect cases. So we are actually super lucky that our two instructors for that class are Shelly Mann and Mandy Wiseman. They are actually with the Secretariat Center, which is also based here on the park. They graciously teach our classes for us. It's a three-day class, and it's everything from how do you halter and lead? 
you know, a lot of these people have zero experience with horses. And they're like, how do you halter and lead? What are the different parts of a horse? How do you learn, you know, we know as horse, familiar, we're familiar with horses, we know what a skinny horse looks like. And a lot of times we understand those horses might just be old. How do we tell someone who's unfamiliar with horses what to look for? And that's really what this class addresses. We also are super lucky that we have um, a gentleman from Jessamine County who comes in and speaks very specifically to the Kentucky statutes and, and what they mean. You know, and if it's a case is brought up, this is how you go through it and you check every box and follow the letter of the law to make sure that if those horses are being abused or neglected, that you have done everything in the correct manner to be able to care for them. Uh, you know, they don't, they don't want it to get stuck in the courts and somebody be like, oh, you didn't check this box, you can't, you can't assist the horses. Uh, we also deal, uh, we're super, super lucky, we have the Bluegrass Stockyards just across the street from the horse park, across 75, and Jim Akers is actually the owner of those facilities, and he teaches all of our dairy and beef cattle parts of it. And again, we know, again, as agricultural people, a lot of us are familiar with dairy cows sometimes look really skinny, right? Real bony hips. These guys are potentially have never been around a dairy cow. And when they get a call and says, oh my gosh, this horse is so skinny, it's in this field, it's so skinny, it's so skinny, we want to provide them with handouts that say, okay, you know, this is a body condition score, this, this horse, this cow is actually okay, this one is definitely in trouble. Uh, so Jim has been fantastic for us in that, in that capacity. So the, we actually opened this to also equine rescues and adoption agencies if they would want to attend these trainings just to kind of learn more you know when they get these hopefully they don't have any but if they get large seizure cases what they can kind of expect um, so we, we try very hard to engage with all different facets of our equine community here uh, so LIT 1 which is what we just hosted livestock investigative training 1 is geared for horses and cattle and then we actually offer uh, LIT 2 which is geared more towards goat sheep swine you know the, the smaller livestock chickens. Um, I have not, I've only been here for like a year and a half, so I have not had the ability to arrange for an LIT2 training yet, uh, but we're really looking forward to be able to host that as well. To take LIT2, the people had to have taken LIT1, only because it's, it's harder to deal with the bigger animals, right? Like it's, it's easier to kind of wrestle around a sheep or a goat than it is to um, load a horse onto a trailer. So that is one educational opportunity that we also offer, and I personally am super excited. We have a uh, and we call it our LAR training. It's our large animal emergency rescue training. And that one is super fun. If you guys have never seen it, I would um, encourage you to, if you can, take a peek at it. We have a couple who come in from North Carolina and they are, it's called Four Hooves Large Animal Emergency Rescue. And they are phenomenal. And what they do is they come into town and we invite anybody who wants to come. We focus very heavily on emergency response. So it's everything from EMTs, firefighters, um, police, and we offer all the vet clinics around and veterinarians to come in and they basically learn how to work together in a crisis situation that involves a horse. And we do super crazy um, demonstrations essentially. So uh, Tori and Justin come in from North Carolina. They bring a big mannequin huge huge mannequin and they do different scenarios here at the park so they've done everything from uh you know mark who works at the park has dug a big hole for us and we've shoved the mannequin down in there and they have to learn how to work together to get this mannequin out of the hole and then we put the horse back in the hole and then we fill it with water and they learn how to get it you know how do they remove a horse from a mud situation which is significantly more complicated than i truly ever ever appreciate uh, we have had, this is why we have signs, if anybody's ever seen our training, we have signs that are like, emergency training in progress. We are lucky enough to be able to go out on our cross country course and literally put the horse in a ditch, in a ditch and wall. And you know, the firefighters have to explain to everybody else how they use these essentially block and tackles to get the horse out of it. Um, we've done trailer rescue you know, scenarios where horses are down in a trailer and they have to figure out how to work together to, to get the horse out. You know, Because again, same thing with the floods in Kentucky, right? Like our priority is human safety first and then equine safety. So it's very interesting to see the groups as they get together. You know, The vets and the horse people are like, yeah, let me in that trailer, I can get him. You know, we'll, we'll drug him and we'll get him out. And the firefighters are like, hey, no, like, you, you gotta wait until we secure the trailer. We, you know, we get, everything else so they don't get hurt and add another element of um, disaster essentially to an already very stressful situation so that is actually september 
25th, 26th, 27th, I believe. It's that last weekend in September. Uh, and it is 40 hands-on spots, but it's unlimited auditors. It's 25 bucks a day to audit. We feed you a great lunch. You come in, you see what we do. It, it's very, very interesting. Um, and you learn a lot. I mean, I, I learned more in those three days than I ever truly understood. I, I know what I didn't know, essentially. Uh, but that is a really, really interesting training class that we do once a year. I would love to be able to, to do it more, honestly, but Justin and Tori are so busy, we just have to like get on their calendar and stick to it. So that has been really helpful. And the other piece that happened last year is we had um, Fire Rescue One came in and was able to show everybody what they have on their truck. So they have all these different tools that we might, you know, that other people and other organizations can utilize if they have a horse that's down or trapped in a trailer or anything like that. So again, it, it is creating a sense of community. You know what I mean? Like nobody wants to feel that like, oh shoot, my horse is buried in mud and I'm by myself. I don't, I don't know who to call. Uh, we actually had a lovely woman who called me in March of last year and I was answered the phone and she was the kindest human being. She said, I'm in Sadieville. I have a Tennessee walker named Todd. He got down, I couldn't get him up. I called our fire department and they were like, we don't know what to do. So they called Scott County. And Scott County sent three people up there and every single one of those guys had taken this large animal emergency rescue class. They were able to get the horse up. He's doing really well. She's super kind. She sends me pictures every so often of Todd so I see how well he is doing. And she's actually going to come in and talk to our class in September and just kind of be like, hey, I'm a real life example of, of who you have helped. And it was on the front page of the Scott County paper. Yes, yes. And, and they're just so, like, I literally, she called and I was like, oh man, I'm going to get yelled at for something. And she was so nice. She was just lovely. So we're really happy when we can, you know, say we're, we're doing what our mission is. You know, we're, we're leading the equine community. We're protecting the equine community. That, that's really what the Horse Council is here for. Um, we do offer, we offer a lot of different things. So, and this is more just for, for you guys to kind of keep in the back of your head as you, as you go about your days and interact with other equine enthusiasts. We offer, we have a program that's called the Save Our Horses program. We call it our SOHO Fund. And that does everything from uh, gelding reimbursement. You know, if there's someone who's like, hey, I, I have this little colt and he doesn't need to be a colt again and I don't have enough, I don't have enough money to get him gelded. You know, we, we have funds that are set aside to help people be good stewards of their horses. We have a euthanasia form. You know, it, it's not really cheap sometimes to euthanize our horses, and they're big and they take a lot of drugs. So we also offer a euthanasia form. You know, we don't, we don't ever want money to be the reason why someone is unable to give their equines the care that they truly need, you know, truly to, sur to survive and, and be healthy and happy. Uh, we do also uh, offer a feed and hay assistance fund. That one, I will tell you, I was very concerned. Uh, I came in towards the end of COVID in the October 2020, and we were very worried that we were just gonna get inundated with needs for uh, money to pay for hay and feed. And, and we have not, you know, which is wonderful. But I am also, of course, concerned that it's because people don't know about the program. And, and that is really a concern to me. So if you guys ever hear of anybody that is financially strapped, whether it's they've lost their job, they got divorced, they had a medical issue, and they can't pay for their hay or feed to keep their horses, please look at the Kentucky Horse Council website. It's a very simple form. It just says, how many horses do you have? What do you feed traditionally? What type of hay do you feed? And then it goes to my health and welfare committee and it is either approved or denied. Very rarely, very rarely denied. And then we are able to usually pay for up to two horses for 30 days. And then that 30 days is extendable to 60. So we don't send the check directly to the horse owner. We usually say, where do you get your feed? Where do you get your hay? You know, and then I call and I say, hey, you know, we're gonna send you X amount of dollars to buy X amount, specifically this hay or feed or so and so. Um, and that really is a program too that, you know, a lot of people don't need help forever. They just need help to get over the hump. You know, and, and that is what that program is designed to do, is it's to say, hey, you got a safety net here. You know, like don't, don't panic, don't send your horses to a low end auction, don't feel that you need to, to sell them immediately. If the horse council can help in any ways, just kind of get you over that hump. We are, we are here to do it, for sure. Um, so we do, I will tell you guys, I'm always looking for people who are interested in helping with our board. You can sit on a committee, you can sit on a board, you can do, do anything your little heart desires, but we have a marketing committee, we have a keynote committee, that dinners, those quarterly dinners I was telling you all about. Uh, we have a health and welfare committee. We always have a vet that sits on that health and welfare committee and a nutritionist that sits on that health and welfare committee in case we get questions I way out of my league. I'm like, this is above my pay grade. This needs to go to somebody else. Um, 
but we also have, you know, we are starting up our, we did a trivia series two years ago, I guess, where we went into some of the local bars and it was all horse trivia. And, you know, we, it was a suggested donation. It's not a pay to play, but it's a suggested donation. And if you win, you get this big swag bag. So we have found horse people, shockingly, um, really only want to do that when it's cold and dark outside. So we generally do it November, December, right around there, or January, February, because the rest of the time we all want to be out with our horses. Um, I'm gonna look at my cheat, my cheat sheet here and make sure that I'm telling you all that I need to tell you. Um, oh, funding. People always ask us, you know, how do you guys get your money? Uh, we are a membership-based organization. So if you are so inclined to become a member of the Horse Council, we would love to have you. We have a lot of different options. You can be a member as an individual, you can be a member as a farm, you can be a member as an organization. Uh, but the majority of people become members because we offer insurance. So not equine insurance, if you're horse colleagues, we can't help you there, uh, but it is liability insurance. So we have a $1 million blanket liability policy through Equisure. And it doesn't matter if you are on a trail ride or you're at a horse show and your horse gets loose and he runs into a car or you know he hurts somebody. That, that liability policy covers you and your horses no matter where you are. So that is truly the, what I, when I talk to people about why they become members, that is their main driver usually. But we also offer really, really awesome membership perks. So we have discounts to the Visit Horse Country Tours. We have discounts to the Horse Magazine. We have discounts to the Kentucky Horse Park gift shop. Um, we have a lot of really, really good benefits that we're not very good about telling people what they are. So we're trying very hard to disseminate information about what we have and what we can offer. Um, and those are all year round. You know, so if you're an individual, pay $45, you get all these extra perks. Honestly, if you guys are like me and you go on two or three horse farm tours, it, it evens out, which is really nice. We are also trying a lot harder this year to engage our out-of-state people who come into the horse park and say, hey, you can pay 45 bucks with us and you can, if you have a family of four, you get all these discounts. Um, but of course, they're kind of hard to capture. So we're looking at a bunch of different marketing ways that we can involve them. But the, the, main, the main income that we get besides our membership is from our foal license plates. So I'm sure you guys have seen the foal lying in the grass. Um, I, I love that plate. I will tell you I got that plate before I knew what the horse council did. Um, but that is the main funding for our organization. So we get about $117,000 a year from those full license plates. And those, you know, all those funds go right back into our welfare programs, health and welfare programs. And we're very proud of those plates. We talk every so often, we're like, we should redo those plates. And then everybody's like, why would we redo something that's doing so well? It doesn't make any sense. So it has been, it, I do really enjoy it. And I love when I see those plates around. I'm like, thank you. Thank you for helping Kentucky horses. So that's really fun. Um, the other thing that I will tell you when I say, have you heard of the Kentucky Horse Council? What do you know about us? The majority of people talk about our jobs board. So our website is terrible. I will tell you right now, we are working very hard to um, reskin it, but I unfortunately have not had a whole lot of time as of late, <laughs> clearly. Um, but our jobs board is awesome. Um, I have a part-time girl who does some work for me and she scours the website for jobs in addition to people now reach out to us. I bet conservatively I get, and we all know this is an anomaly, right? The last year and a half, but we get between five and 10 jobs a week that are that ask to be posted. So our jobs board is completely free. Um, if anybody has any jobs that they want posted that are equine specific, they can also be remote equine. Uh, but we post them on our jobs board and it's really heartening to hear a lot of people say, oh my gosh, I, I found my job through your jobs board. It, it really is, it's really cool. But it's everything from vet techs to anesthesiology assistants to CPAs to on-farm help. You know, it's, it's a little bit of everything. So if you even think you might be interested in something in, in Kentucky horse-wise, please, we encourage you to look at that jobs board. Um, our Facebook presence is right about 10,000 people, and I will tell you, unfortunately, we grow when there's natural disasters, which is good because it's information dissemination, but I am, I am sad that that is, of course, the reason that so many people follow us. Uh, we do post updates as often as we can on the different needs if there is a natural disaster. So we just did a flood update this morning, uh, but we do also post our jobs. We post different events that are happening all over the Commonwealth, you know, not just here at the park, even though we try very hard to support our, to support our brothers and sisters out here. But we, we really try hard to make people understand that we are not, you know, one breed. We are based in Lexington, but we're not just thoroughbreds. You know, we're, we're trail riders and we're, you know, equine enthusiasts and we're retired horse people and dressage horse people. 
it, it really is a little bit of everything. And, and we want very much for people to feel that the Horse Council is their advocate, no matter what breed or discipline they ride. So we are working very hard to explain to people who we are and what we do. Uh, and hopefully we will do a better job of that in the future. Let me peek and see what else. Oh, I'm almost right on time. Okay. Let's see what else I have to type. Oh, one other thing that might be of interest to you all is that we sell equine liability signs. That is another big, another big um, reason why people come to the horse park, the horse council, and actually our office at the park, is to pick up these liability signs. So we have the, the big liability signs that says all of the correct verbiage that you guys need. Um, whether you have one horse in the backyard, you run a boarding operation, horse show facility, uh, we have both equine liability signs and agritourism liability signs. So if you need those, please feel free to go to KentuckyHorse.org. That is our website. You can shop on there. And also if you're local and you don't want to pay the $10 shipping, more than happy to just email me, call me, text me, and say, hey, can I please come and pick one up? We'll absolutely get it to you so you don't have to pay the shipping. Is there any questions? I, I just was wondering, Sarah, how many states, do you know how many states have a horse council? Because I know all the ones I've been in, you know. Yes, have. we do, and that's actually a really good question. So the Kentucky Horse Council is a member of the American Horse Council. So that is our main overarching body who lobbies in Washington for equine-related interests. So there are about between 35 and 40 different horse councils. There are some big states that you'd be surprised don't have. Florida doesn't have one, California doesn't have one. But they do a little bit of everything. So the Ohio Horse Council is very heavily vested in trail and land preservation, trail upkeep and land preservation. So they all kind of do their own thing. But it's been really neat because we have this organization called the Coalition of State Horse Councils. And it's been really fun because we can all kind of get on, fortunately we're in Zoom calls right now, uh, but talk about, hey, this is what I do. And I do this expo. And what do you do about this? So there are a couple states that we're going to reach out to individually and encourage them to form a horse council and hopefully be able to give them the blueprint and say, you know, this is how we did it. It worked really well. Because it's not that there's not vested equine people in all those states. It's just that I think people are intimidated. I mean, it is intimidating, right, to start a statewide organization. So we're hopeful that we can get, get the rest of those rest of those guys on board for sure. It's intimidating starting a local. Yes, yes, absolutely. A hundred percent it is for sure. It is for sure. But again, my name is Sarah Coleman. Um, I'm the executive director of the Horse Council. Our website is KentuckyHorse.org. My email directly is Sarah, S-A-R-A-H, at KentuckyHorse.org. And we are more than happy to assist you guys with anything equine related you might have.